Well, I knew this was gonna happen sooner or later. As people start testing the Z8, people are starting to talk about the fact that the cards inside the camera are getting hot. Let's talk about that. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wayne. Today we're gonna to do a bit of a tech talk and this is including the Z8 and some of the things that people are talking about right now since the camera's been out and the fact that how it's gonna be managing the heat since it's a smaller body than the Z9 and it doesn't have a fan. But what it does have is some incredible video codecs all the way up to 8.3K raw internally. Now I'll say, when I heard about this camera coming out, one of the things that I speculated was that there'll be two versions of this camera. One made as a hybrid camera to satisfy photo shooters, and another version that's gonna have a fan or some kind of cooling capability to satisfy video shooters. Now, why did I say that? The Z9, an integrated body camera, has a stack sensor that can shoot all the way up to 8.3K. So everybody's like, wow, that's great, that's fantastic, but how do you cool it? Well, air-cooled. Believe it or not, that camera has no fan. So you have to wonder, you know, Nikon did some kind of magic with this thing. Nikon cameras are typically, well, at least a professional line, are usually built out of magnesium and then have the covers over it. They're rugged, weather sealed. You can take them in all kinds of conditions and they'll work fine. The pro bodies, you know, next level stuff. Everybody who owns one of those things as a pro or you can afford it if you're not a pro, you recognize what the technology that goes into building that camera and how rugged it is. So here we are about a year and so later, a year and a half or so, since the Z9 has been released and they came out with a Z8. Basically the same camera in a different shell with some additional features. But of course, cooling, how do you manage that? The reason why I'm doing this video is because I saw a couple of videos on YouTube where people were saying that the cards inside the camera get hot. And I have shot the Z9 briefly, that video on it, and I did get a card warning that the card was overheated. Now, I shot on my Sony a7R5. I tested out the 8K on this camera, and I usually shoot you know, with the screen off because I know if you don't do this, this thing is going to overheat. The first time I had the camera, it was flush. I just got out of the box, I was messing around with the menus and I was, I put the camera in 8K and just playing around with the menus for about 20 minutes. It gave me a warning and it shut off. Not recorded, not doing anything. At first I wanted to return the camera because I'm like, what the hell? How can this camera just be doing nothing and shut off? It's never happened since then. It's very strange, quirky thing, but yeah. Some of my videos you see me sitting right here is in 8K. You've seen some of the other ones where I took it out in the street and record with it, 8K, works fine. But when you start to go for a long period of time, it gets warm. I'm back in November, December, well, December to January timeframe when I got the camera. It was cool here in Chiang Mai, so it didn't really need to be cooled. It didn't need a fan, it just, you know, record with it, it's, it's fine outside. Now, when it's like 100 to 105 degrees, I was recording here for about 15 minutes. That's when I got the heat warning. So here we are, Nikon is now released, the Z8. Another camera on the prosumer line that has no fan. Hmm. Possibly issues, right? During the rumor phases, we speculate about what could be coming. I was in the video camp. This camera has to have a fan. Okay, now we got the camera, no fan, but it has the same video features. So, what does it use? The Z8 utilizes CF Express and SD cards. Now, I've had these cards for a long period of time, so you know, don't worry about the size. That's a slow one for photo. I usually utilize the faster one for video. Okay? if I need to, but typically when I'm recording video 4K and above, I'm going to the SD card. As a matter of fact, let's go into the Sony here. This is Sony's version. 
compare it to CF Express type B, the type A and type B, okay, definitely smaller. So one would expect that this little thing here will generate a lot of heat, right? Oops. And if that's the case, then that means these guys will also generate some heat. I have two of these CF Express card, and I want to show you something that's on them. This one here, it has metal stuff like pretty much all the way around on the side, on the back. This angel bird, the metal area is pretty much only on the back and the front, but not the side. Okay? Nothing on the side. So if we think about how these technologies work, it's basically similar to a solid state drive that you have in your machine. This particular one is a NVMe. Let me put it right side up. This is a Western Digital NVMe. These things can go up to like 4,000 or more uh, megabytes per second transfer rate. And this card, I think if I remember correctly, it's what, 1700? Yep, so this one is 1700. This one is 1750. You can see the speed on it. 1700, right? This one is 1750. And usually when these guys put this information on here, it's usually the read speed, not the write speed. But they're basically gonna be around 1200 or so. So they're still good enough to record video. 600 megabits, 8K, you probably need a little bit more. But having the right cards definitely help. So if you're recording for a long period of time, anyone who utilizes one of these in the computer, if you build a machine, you know that this thing runs hot. If you, if you don't build a machine, if you put your hand in the back of your laptop, your desktop, that sucker runs warm. We all know that. It probably does the hot because, you know, the fans are the cool it. If you watch guys who are building their own PCs, you see them have a lot of fans or water cooling their CPU. This is silicon. Similar technology, but requires more cooling. So when you utilize these things in an external enclosure like this, and I want to show you here. So you have this little strip here, which is the heat transfer device that basically transfers the heat to this aluminum cover. And the entire thing helps to keep the drive cool. It's not cool. It's hot. It gets hot when you're utilizing it. I use that to edit from sometimes, and yes, it's hot. So now imagine having this technology inside your camera and you have no fan inside of it. It's going to definitely get warm. So depending on how long you're recording and where you are, it's going to cause some heat. Is it something to worry about? Yes, to a certain extent. For those who are recording a long period of time, usually you have a camera with a fan, you know, that helps you out. For the Z8 that has no fan, there may be a bit of concern. Now, for the people that I've seen that has the heat warning come up, remember, that's a card heat warning. The camera has its own heat level as well. So the camera is designed to handle some amount of heat in. It dissipates what it can and when it can't, you know, the electronics will basically tell you, hey, it's time to shut this thing off or I'm gonna shut off because it's too warm. They're not going to design this thing to burn up and cause any problems. That's, that's not how things work. Your $4,000 camera is not gonna just fry because of that. So, do you worry? To some extent, yes. When your card's getting hot, you may wanna, you know, cut your recording so you can actually continue later on. One of the reasons why people have multiple cards, in case things get warm, you can always switch to another one. But also, the CF Express is a better technology than SD and it will run for a longer period of time, run faster. Probably won't stay cooler, but at the same time, it's more reliable. I don't worry. I've been shooting with these things for a long period of time. I know they get hot. It's not something that I concern myself with because I know that the technology has been around for a while. It has to be in a, I forgot what the temperature is for the um, 
NVMe drives, but it's, it's pretty on the, on, the, on the hot side when it comes to their operating temperature. It's not gonna run cool no matter how much fan you put on. If you cool it down too much, it's just not gonna work right. They were designed to work at a higher temperature. So if you know that and you can get that out of your mind about the overheating stuff, you can record, you'll be fine. If your camera overheats and shut down, yeah, that's the issue that you really have to worry about. But again, if you're watching your temperature warnings, you should know when it's time to shut down the camera and take a break. And in the manual, it tells you if the camera overheats, don't handle it when it's hot, don't handle a card when it's hot. Keep that in mind. If you keep those things in mind, you see the heat warning, you shut the camera off, let it sit for a couple of minutes, then you can take it out. And the sound when you're in the production, you probably can't do that. You have to pop it out and get something in quick. I get it. But it's not like the manufacturer designed a camera to fail. So don't worry about that. Your camera's gonna be fine. Now, if you guys have any questions about tech stuff, because in my former life before I retired, I worked in the tech field and I did some tech videos on my channel in the early days about things. So I can, you know, share some information about that. I know sometimes when we see videos from other people out there about things that are coming out in the market, we get a little bit worried. And the old saying is bad news travels faster than good news. So hopefully if you have a friend or you know someone out there who's worried about it and they want to get this camera, but they're somewhat worried, I don't think Nikon will put out something that's going to overheat and cause problems. They've proven it with the Z9 that they can do a camera that can do all this recording internally without an issue. I don't think they would put out another camera that would not be able to handle it. Now I will say this, I did check the information online and I saw that the water camera can record two hours and change, that's two hours and five minutes in UHD, well 4K at 60 frames per second. That information was for recording in 8-bit mode. So that's something we have to put in our mind like, well, if you record at 30 frames per second, at 10 bits, how long it's gonna be, I don't know. I don't have the camera yet to test to see what that's like, but I figure by the time I get it, somebody else may have posted a video and say, hey, it can go this long. Gerald hasn't posted this video yet. I'm assuming that he's got the camera, but he used to do more extensive testing on the camera. So that's one place I would look for for someone who really put it through the paces to see what it's gonna be like. Other than that, as soon as I get the camera in hand, I'll do some testing on it and see what it's like. I have to like go someplace or play around with it and see what it's like, because of course you know, I got this camera, she's kind of nice. Do I pass her up? You know, what do we do? Something we'll talk about in another video, but for now, hopefully this, this video has given you information that you need about this camera and avail you of any kind of fears you have about getting it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.